All right, so today you guys have been asking us about it. You've seen us talk about it. You've seen it on my Instagram page. We're talking about the jug today. So what we're going to do, we're going to teach you guys how to make the jug. New Year's Eve is right around the corner. This right here is a perfect drink for your New Year's Eve events. The jug. You with it? Let's get it. All right, guys, so hey, today we're bringing to you the jug. You guys have been asking us about it. You've seen us talk about it. You've seen it on Instagram. You saw it on Troy's video when we went and hung out and did the crawfish boil. So today we're going to teach you guys how to make the jug. And so what we've got here is we've got three different variations of the jug. We've got a frozen margarita that is uh, decorated with some blackberries. I have a jug teeny, which is a uh, martini made with the jug. And... We have a burrito. The standard classic. The burrito is dirtied here because it has jalapenos and mm, some uh, olive, olive juice, juice in it. Mm -hmm. Dirty? I don't really care for the dirty. I'm going to let Jean have the dirty so I'll she can it. have that. But guys, hey, if you want to learn how to make the jug, sit back, relax, grab your own cocktail. Or two. Because <laughs> the jug is coming up next. Mm -hmm. So we went to the local grocery store and we have your basic um, sangria jug, okay? It's your basic glass jug. It has an easy handle for holding. It has a screw top. Super important, you want a screw top. What we're looking at is three fingers of vodka from the bottom. And then we're gonna do three fingers of tequila, a finger of orange juice, and then sweet and sour to the top. You'll have a basic full jar of or full bottle of sweet and sour you'll have about a half of a bottle of tequila about a half a bottle of vodka and then you'll have five or six ounces of orange juice in here orange juice is not vital you don't have to have it more times than not i don't have it but it does add a natural sweetness to it so the labels came about by we were having fun making the bottle and just thought oh, i would be fun to show the markings of the measurements on there so a girlfriend of mine does vinyl cutting. I threw her some sample colors and said, can you make something with this? Can you play something up with this? And she came, in, she came up with a great set for us. Now I've gone back to her two or three more times with different color palettes. And so she has a wide range of colors that she's made for me and all the different citrus colors. So we've got vodka, we've got tequila, we have sweet and sour, we have orange juice, We've got our handy dandy lime, and then we've got a lemon, I have a lime too, and then we've got the jug. All right, so we're gonna start decorating our jug. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab two of your basic towels, and make sure that you grab the jug how you're gonna actually hold it. You wanna make sure that your handle is so that you can see it. So I'm gonna lay these towels down just to wedge it so that it doesn't roll away. And now the next thing I'm going to do is guesstimate where my lines go. So I'm going to go three fingers from the bottom and make sure that you kind of do flat surface because you want the surface. And if it's not precise, it's fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to throw down our lines. So I can eyeball about three is right about there. And if the line isn't straight, it's okay. After you've had enough jug, it looks straight. Now I'm gonna put the vodka on first. Vodka and tequila, you're gonna use the same exact amounts. You're gonna use about three fingers, which is about a half a bottle of vodka. Half a bottle of tequila. Again, about three lines. doesn't have to be precise where you put it. So when you peel your vinyl off, you want to go slow because you do run the risk if the letter hasn't adhered to the glass of it coming off. So you go slow. And on an angle often helps too. Thank you. 
Last thing we've got is our lemon. Now, because this bottle is on an angle, it's always gonna crimp like this. And what I'll do is I'll get a pair of scissors and I'll cut a little piece off of that so it lays on top and you'll never notice. Last thing is the best part. We've got the jug label. Now with this one, take your time pulling it off because if you pull too fast, you could potentially rip off the letters and the lemon. Sometimes you have to rub on it to push down pressure. There we have the jug. So we've, we've made the prettiness of the jug and so now comes the fun part. Grab my funnel, grab in the alcohol, and let's build our jug. So let's talk about how to serve this jug, okay? So there's three different drink variations that I'm gonna to introduce to you guys today. The first one we're gonna look at is basically our typical burrito. This is what we have 95% of the time. So we're gonna take a glass, we're gonna add our ice. We're gonna pour in about half a glass of beer. Now, let's talk about the beer. You want something that's like a basic lager. We use Dosa Case, we've used um, Bud Light Lime, we've used uh, Corona. Any of the light lagers that have a mild flavor to it will mix nicely. Then we're gonna add in our jug, and depending on how strong you want it, you can do a half, you can do two thirds jug, you can do half beer, two thirds beer, it's your flavor choice. You're gonna put your straw in. Now, I like to add jalapenos to mine. So I'll add some jalapeno slices. I'll add some of the jalapeno juice. And there we go. We're good to go. Wow. And so this is our first drink. So why do we add the jalapenos? It's what we call, we make it a dirty drink. So it tastes just like a dirty martini, but meets a margarita. So we're gonna have jalapenos. Sometimes we do olives in there too, and it's so good. That's our first drink. It's our version of a dirty beer garita. Now, if you don't want it dirty, you can have it without the jalapeno juice, just as good. So the next drink we're gonna be talking about is called the Jug Teeny. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our jug. We also have some dry vermouth. We've got some olives for decoration and extra flavor. We've got our ice, we've got our martini shaker. So we're gonna add the ice to our martini shaker. We're gonna add in about a half an ounce to an ounce, just depending on how dirty you like your martini mixture. And then we're gonna add our jug. I'm gonna do maybe two to three ounces, kind of a heavy pour. 
Now, we're gonna put our shaker lid on. And this is a fun mason jar one that I found on Amazon. And we're gonna shake. Doesn't that sound yummy? It pops off. And we're just gonna pour it in. Now we can add our olives for decoration. And we're good to go. Cheers. Ooh, that's strong. It's good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the versatility of the jug. I've got some Tarani's black cherry syrup. So we're gonna add some fruity flavors to it. I've got some blackberries for decoration at the end. And of course I have my ice and I've got my jug. So I'm gonna take my blender. I happen to have this little um, ninja cup. Put some ice in it. I'm gonna add my jug to it. I'm gonna pour it up to the top. Your guess is how much you wanna put it based on how much you wanna have in your glass. So I'm gonna kinda of fill it up to the top. Depending on how slushy you want it, you may add more ice, you may add less ice. I am gonna use some of this black cherry syrup just to kind of give it a sweetness.